Welcome to Retro Ramblings. If you want to do a bit of retro game coding but don't have a spare year to write an assembly language, I might have a few tricks that could help you. Check it out. Welcome to part one. Today we're going to go over the, the animation of our little aliens here as they move back and forth ac across the screen and also how they move down the screen. Basically this is just done with string variables and printing them and the use of Petsky characters and uh, that's probably the main focus of today. So let's just quickly have a look at the way the characters are set up. As you can see we've got these here which are the uh, Commodore 64 Petsky characters. These are some graphics, they're the top of his antenna. The, this, these symbols, as meaningless as they appear, they, what they are telling us is that we're, once we're at this point we're going to go down and then back in terms of our position on the screen and then render the next line and then the, the feet. And so these three rows of characters are rendered on top of each other and they produce something like him. Him. So, so these string variables contain the the basically the image of our aliens, and um, that's where we want to start. So once we we know how that's structured, the rest is just a matter of how we assemble the the rows of these aliens and render them on the screen. So well, let's have a look at the basic code on the uh, CBM POG Studio. It's a little bit easier to read, except for the graphic characters. Um, so if you're new to BASIC, uh, hopefully this won't be too difficult. If you're a seasoned programmer, then you'll probably be laughing at what I'm going to be saying. But uh, let's see how we go. All right, let's start at the top. I'm setting up some animation and some string variables. I won't worry about those yet. They'll become clearer as we go. But we're setting up the um, video memory and the color memory, the locations on the memory map where we uh, uh, poke to uh, to generate the graphics on the screen and also the colors. Uh, in fact I don't think we actually even use that in step one. These poke statements just give us a black border and a black screen. Um, we have three ships to start the game and we start on level one. So that's all those variables are saying. But I just missed this step. This is 1000. Let's go down to 1000 and have a look what's going on there. This is what I just showed you uh, previously, where we're setting up those graphic characters. It's even it doesn't make much sense when you look at it on a Commodore 64, and it makes unfortunately even less sense when you look at it on CBM's Program Studio. But these are those characters representing our little aliens. So we cycle through and set up those A1, A2, etc. string variables. So that's what we do at Line 50. We set up those string variables. We then clear the screen, and now we're going down to. 1050 and 1100. Basically what we're doing here is creating more uh, of the uh, strings that we, we print and uh, the reason I'm breaking it up breaking it up into these separate sections is because you don't need to reset up all the basic uh, graphic characters but you do want to reposition them on the screen as you go through a game and aliens are killed off and so forth. So here we go through and set up I and J. These are I and J are the two sides of the animation and so and then we go and set them all up. So basically what we're doing is setting up each row and we've got a row zero with blanks. BL string is the, the blank and um, we won't worry about why I do that. That'll, that's something that'll make more sense as we uh, progress. And then we take another step further and we set up L1 string and M1 string. That's going to be again the rows and L and M being the two different sides of the animation. So finally what we end, end up with is L1 which is uh, row 1, L2 and L3 being row 2 and row 3 of our aliens as we see them on the screen. So just to clarify, this becomes L1 and M1 as it, they cycle back and forth to produce the animation, L2 and M2, L3 and M3. So this simplifies things down when it gets to actually printing them. Okay, so we've set up all the graphic characters. And where were we? Main loop. 
Okay, so we're starting the main loop. Now, X and Y are the starting location of all our aliens. So as we uh, progress the um, one level to the next, our Y will increase, and our X also increases as we go back and forth along the screen. And what I've done with X is it goes, it goes increases increments by one until we get to 13, uh, where the X value then becomes 26 minus X1. So what I'm doing is I'm allowing the aliens to move across until it gets to 13, and then the 26 minus X1 will make X then decrement back down to zero. So that gives us the back and forth motion of our aliens. Okay, so if we then print the uh, our starting position, which is home, which takes us to the top left hand corner, and we go down, uh, we go down 10 times, but we take a left string of that, y plus 1, so we get the home plus the amount of down characters to represent going down the screen y times. And you know, this, okay, this if x1 equals 0, what we're doing is we're just uh, deleting the previous row as we move down the screen. So, and what we're also doing, I've jumped this up here, is we're actually only going to render one row at a time as we cycle through the main loop. And that allows us to do other things without hogging the entire uh, program as we rent, try and render all three um, rows at the same uh, cycle because that'll just, uh, just slow down the uh, and make the, the game more clunky. So depending on row, which increments by one, we'll go to this uh, 250 and at 250 for instance if our animation is 1 we print our L1 string but we print it using this left string and what the left string does it will move us across the left of 20 spaces comma X so if we're at 10 it'll cut this 20 spaces into 10 spaces and print those 10 spaces before we actually print L1 after that we go down 3 positioning us for the next row then we go to 250. Now a lot of the coding might seem strange, inefficient or illogical and you'd be absolutely right but there's madness to that, there is madness, certainly is madness but there might be some logic to my madness and then what I'm doing is trying to uh, make this as efficient as possible because we're ultimately going to compile this we want, this, uh, want the compiler to be able to interpret this into machine language in uh, the most efficient way possible so you'll find a lot of uh, aspects of my coding apparently inefficient or apparently mad but uh, like I said there uh, there is reasons for it. So we've used this command to represent our three rows to render those three rows and then we get to the bottom here where if uh, we've gone to the far extreme of our motion on one row and we've rendered the third row then we go down to 498 Again, this is I'm just I'm jumping around. I'm using uh, jumps because I, again, if statements if they're equal to, it's a lot simpler for the compiler to to compile that than using greater than's or less than's. And also, I've got one if, then if another if. That again, why didn't I just say if x equals 26 and r o equals 3? Well, then there's two things it's got to evaluate. Let's evaluate one at a time, and that'll make it more efficient. So let's go down to 498. Then we go back to 150. So a new row sorry, moving all our raiders down a full row will require us to go to 150, otherwise it'll go to 165. So 150, as you can see, y equals y plus 1. We're incrementing the uh, position on the screen downwards by 1. But if we weren't at that point that we did that if statement for, we'll be here going through the individual uh, rendering of the rows followed by the position on the screen. And that's basically it and this is what we get. So next time I'll uh, go into a bit more detail. We might add the uh, our little spaceship and checking for characters and joysticks and start adding the additional functionality to make this into a real game but uh, uh, they'll be coming up in future episodes so as usual like and subscribe and all that. Thank you very much.